July. We are in a crazy lightning storm. We are working. Oh my. <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> That's scary. Why is Chloe so calm? She's just like, what is up with you, mother? Oh my goodness. I've been uh, chat GPTing what to do in a lightning storm. It's crazy. Got little red eye right outside the window because it's so muddy that I have uh, I've got the rug right in between us. Yeah, pretty. Yep, that would be a writing utensil. Whoa! Yes! Lightning is so cool but scary. It's just like right outside the window. It's striking trees around me. And there were a couple that, ugh, like that one. It's vibrating! The thunder rocks beneath my feet. If you uh, need to take lessons in Zen during a crazy lightning storm, Chloe is the best teacher. She's doing just fine. I have Trazodone if needed. She don't need it. No, no, you don't need it, do you? Do. You know, I think one of those lightning strikes was so close that it's like, I think, I think my whole body is reacting to it. I feel a little bit like, like this. And I am for like 15 minutes after. It was so close. I think I'm like mildly electrocuted. I feel it in my chest and my brain. I don't know if it's in my head because it freaked me out. And this is just like an intense adrenaline cortisol. Or if it literally was like, so much electricity, so close. Anyway. Here I am, like, electrocuted. Chloe's chilling. Chilling just like that. Look at her. Look at her. The rainy days turn the forest floor into a sea of vibrant green. And wherever there is water, there is life. One cloudy afternoon while on a Zoom call in my car home office, a herd of elk began to pass by. I sped up the footage here to capture the scale of this herd. There were like 200 elk, maybe more. And then I drove my nomadic car office back to my nomadic RV home, just in time for another downpour. I'm sleepy and tired, and Chloe has the zoomies. <laughs> I've been inside all day. I've been nesting, nesting in the uh, really beautiful, cozy rain. Makes us nice and tired, you know? Hi, Chloe, say hi. Say hi to everybody. Chloe says hi. All this rainfall leads to what I call sunflower season. We were just at the start of it. There's something magical about walking through the forest after the monsoon rains. The air is fresh, rich with the scent of damp wood and pine. It's in these moments that I realize how much I need these forests and how much I need this nomadic life. 
Without nature's reminders, my mind can turn molehills into mountains, my thoughts storming into stress like lightning that electrifies the sky. But here, in this stillness, I am reminded of what truly matters. As Thoreau said, I went into the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life. August. It was these early August mornings when I accidentally fell in love and wholeheartedly committed to this old RV. I debated selling her since I bought her, but everything changed as she sheltered me in the monsoon beauty. Over the summer, I fell madly in love with Clunk right before we almost parted ways. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Since midsummer, I've not had any thoughts of selling Clunk, which is the first time that that has occurred since I bought her because I have been on the fence since I bought her and now she and I we're a duo we're a team she's my gal I'm her girl so since I decided to keep her I decided to invest in her and that's when uh, Sergio the best RV repairman in all of the lands came over and we discovered this it is not able to charge because maybe the battery is bad Sergio helped me with these batteries for the time being. And one of the reasons Sergio is so awesome is he not only fixes, he teaches. Another way to avoid this happening is if you have more than one battery and they say one of them's broken, replace both. If you're in Northern Arizona and need mobile RV support, Sergio is the best. His business is called Good Times RV Repair and Remodel. So that leads to this video's sponsor. Dr. Prepare. Dr. Prepare was my second sponsorship I ever had on this channel. And I will tell you, I have had about a year and a half to experience this product, which is the product that I was sponsored for, gosh, way back in spring of 23. I have been so happy with the quality of this power station that when I saw that Dr. Prepare was interested in having me try out a couple lithium ion batteries for my RV. I was like, absolutely yes, without a doubt. And I will tell you, as soon as I opened these and I saw the quality difference on just the exterior of these versus my old batteries, and then with lithium ion batteries, you don't have to maintain them. Their lifespan is longer. There's just, they're better quality much better quality. The battery life lasts longer to where it makes them a better quality for your money. And then Dr. Prepare, you guys, they're just so good, so good with energy. So let me tell you a bit about these batteries. Each battery has a capacity of 100 amp hours, which is 1,280 watt hours. With my two Dr. Prepare Life Pro 4 batteries, I'm hosting 2,560 watt hours of power. These batteries have a rated voltage of 12.8 volts and 3,000 life cycles. That's a big deal. They have both low and high temperature protection, which is great because RVs lack insulation. These batteries are waterproof, they only weigh 28 pounds, and Dr. Prepare offers a 10-year warranty. These batteries are legit, and I am so grateful because power is so important as a remote working nomad, and I know I'm in good hands now. This is Clunk's first time in a campground. It's not my first time in a campground, but it's Clunk's first time in a campground. Chloe and I are both roasting. It is so hot. Anyway, we are at a campground to do an interview as part of our collaboration that is going on that I've been talking about. And I'll tell you what I am interviewing this time. I have been so excited to share about this collaboration with Cheap RV Living. You guys, I'm a roving reporter with Cheap RV Living now. How cool is that? So what does that mean? Well, as you know, Bob Wells, the amazing founder of the channel, he does everything from tour videos to teaching videos. And then there's Brian Gifford over there, who's also a roving reporter and he does interview tours with folks where he's at. Well, I have the incredible blessing of doing that too. So I get to meet nomadic folks, hear their nomadic story, tour their nomadic rigs, and simultaneously I am working on a mini documentary mental health series with nomadic folks. 
So that's going to be coming out soon on Sheep RV Living. In fact, if you'd like to see sort of the trailer promotional video of that, hop on over to Cheap RV Living, watch the interview where Bob and I are talking and he's introducing me as a roving reporter. And within that, you'll see the trailer for the upcoming mini documentary series. This project, you guys, has been one of the most meaningful, creative, heartfelt, fun, connecting projects of my entire life. Bob Wells has literally changed a societal landscape. He has given the what, the how, the why to this lifestyle to be able to be part of such a legacy of societal change really is one of the greatest honors I've ever had. So I am blessed, I am grateful, I am excited and what that means for this channel. My ideal aim is to have a video out on this channel once per month, the first Thursday of every month. However, I want to be very reasonable, very honoring of not pushing things because I became a nomad so that I don't get stressed out and burned out and there's gonna be quite a lot of videos that I'm working on over there which is so cool and I also have my counseling that I'm doing from the road so my plate is quite full I would rather produce high quality content on this channel even if there's breaks in the schedule from time to time. So I request you be patient, turn on those notifications. My aim, like I said, is the first Thursday of every month. I'll do my best to hit that. And we'll see how this all unfolds because I don't really know how to manage the time of all of this yet because it's this brand new experience. It also has given a vision to this channel. This channel is gonna be primarily vlogs. It's like the diary of Chloe and my and Klunk's nomadic experience. So the teaching videos, the how-to videos, even some of like the mental health or philosophical why videos are all gonna be over on Cheap RV Living where this is just our digital diary. Thank you for being excited with me and definitely hop on over to Cheap RV Living to check things out. Now back to mid-August, August 15th to be exact. One year ago today, Clunk and I became a thing. One year ago, to the day, on this evening, I had massive anxiety and buyer's remorse and concerns about what was ahead in my future. And I was also thrilled and excited and jumping and dancing in the rig. One year ago, a pendulum began to swing in my mind, sending my heart on a roller coaster ride. At times, I found myself in love with RV life, grateful for the privacy and freedom. But other days, I felt weighed down by the seemingly endless maintenance. Some days, I longed for the simplicity of living in a car, where maintenance was almost non-existent. But then, I'd cherish having an actual home on wheels, a space where I could stand, dance, and cook comfortably. There were times I loved this rig so much, it brought tears to my eyes. And at other times, I felt so trapped, it brought about fury. It's been a strange year, an emotional year. But I found peace with my decision to stick with this old clunky gal. Chloe and I are on a big multi-mile hike, walk. Basically, we're going to get the car. We drove the RV to a new location. So for folks who were wondering about how I do the moving, that's how. And sometimes, actually most of the time, my folks come and give me a ride. Thank you so much, mom and dad. <laughs> I also like the walking in between places too. It kind of is cool, like in some interesting way. Since I can't tow, can't believe I can't tow. For an entire year, I thought that was an option. But it's been such a low priority that clearly I haven't looked into it, you know? But it's not an option. Anyway, I hope we can cross this dry lake. It looks like a dry lake. I don't know if it's dry. It might be a wet lake. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Hi, Sergio. 
Hi, how you doing, Autumn? Welcome back. <laughs> it's been a fun day. Sergio came out to my rig approximately six or seven times this summer. He literally prevented my rig from explosion by helping me out with a propane leak at 9 p.m. And here, he prevented this door from falling off as I drove down the road. That moon is full, coming up through the trees, right through my window. So cool. It's actually cold this morning. I've got my neck warmer, which feels great. It is getting toward late August. My ideal temperature for nomadic life ranges from the low 40s with a high of 65. Northern Arizona had been in the mid 80s for months by this point, and I was longing for cooler days. On the mornings before the rain, I took advantage of the sunny sky to charge my power stations. However, in these monsoon summers, the skies can shift from sun to downpour very quickly. But it's in those moments just before the rain arrives that northern Arizona shows her truest beauty. The air is thick with anticipation and the landscape feels alive. The clouds begin to gather on the horizon and the sun casts a glow across the golden fields. The sunsets during the season can take your breath away. Deep oranges, fiery reds, and lavender blend into each other in ways where the sky doesn't even look real. It looks like a painting. It's so pretty that even Chloe takes a break from demolishing her leash to gaze up at the beautiful sky. We are in a thunderstorm once more, and it's so messy. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. It's not really messy. It's just a tiny bit of stuff in a tiny space makes it seem like it is really messy. And right here, I've got therapeutic materials. This is where I do my work each day. This is why I need the RV, you guys. There's my amazing view. I love it, I love it. Oh, we're back to this lightning being so close and Chloe just climbed up here because she likes to be close to her mama when it's storming like this. And I like to be close to my girl. Oh, that was really bright lightning strike, but it was a little further away than I expected. I think it took like two or three seconds. I thank goodness I got my propane leak under control since it's lightning like crazy. Otherwise, this rig could blow up. That is uh, not ideal to have your rig blow up. Um, so, hey, a big shout out to Sergio. Yeah. I mean, it's pouring hard. They said, um, possible flash flooding it's it's flooding out there and it's such a gorgeous spot but it is kind of a lake bed no Marilyn soaking okay let's see if I can salvage this it's cardboard I think she's a little bit blurry sorry Marilyn Marilyn was salvaged. Like my hair's all wet. I literally feel like I took a shower. This is really cool. It feels great. The natural showers are a thing. Seriously, look at that smile. Chloe and I spent any free time we had this summer driving our favorite roads and looking at our favorite flowers. And I want to share with you something I am so grateful for. This video will have posted one day after I turned 41. I became a nomad when I was 38. I dreamed of this lifestyle since I was 17. Sometimes I close my eyes. I see myself at 17 and I tell her, hey, guess what? We did it. And I know she always knew we would. 
and I know she is happy. And the truth is, it's harder than I thought it'd be. And it's better than I thought it'd be. If you long for this, my friends, if you dream of it, it's within reach. It's hard work. I promise it's hard. But you can be free. You can be self-directed. You can be your own landlord. You can be your own boss. You can be guided by the ultimate authority and embrace the human impulse to seek something greater, to live authentically and to surrender to the wild. The road will challenge you. It will demand sacrifice, but the rewards are beyond measure. For me, even with propane leaks, mice invasions, and things breaking in my rig that I never fathomed could break, I wake up every day to the beauty of the ever-changing sky. I breathe air that feels freer than anything I've ever known, and I realize that this life, this dream I dared to dream since I was 17, it's possible. It's beautiful. And God willing, I will spend the next 41 years of my life on the road where I belong. So, if you feel the pull, don't hesitate. If you hear the call, answer it. And one day you might just wake up in a field of flowers so vast your eyes can't see the end of it. I guess we better get into town. We got some errands to run, some work to do. So, so beautiful though, isn't it? September. As we neared the end of summer, if we weren't wandering around in a field of flowers, we were bracing for the next storm on the horizon. A lot of lightning. We are gonna go in now. Given that I just had a propane leak and that lightning storm is headed right this way. I know it's fine, but my paranoia is gonna go check it. By the way, here is how I knew I had a propane leak. This photo was from a few days prior before the leak was fixed. First, I smelled propane. Then, I took a spray bottle mixture that I made of water and Dawn dish soap and sprayed it on the propane lines. If you see bubbles like this, you've got a leak that needs immediate tending. That lightning's getting a little too close to the outside. I would show you, yep, just day in the life super duper messy stuff everywhere lightning you know doing its thing out there but uh i have a lot of work to do so i can't do my full cleanup right now even though that would be very like soothing but i'm gonna set a timer see how much i can get done in five minutes I paused the time lapse because the storm is here. So I wanted to show you what that's like. Yeah. Holy cow, really loud. That is, has got to be pale. The storm that night was one of the most intense of the entire summer. The RV rocked in the wind, the gusts howled through the windows, and the dry lake bed we were camped in began to flood. But by morning, we woke to the calm after the storm. And I was reminded that no matter how fierce the winds may blow or how turbulent life may feel, there is always peace waiting on the other side.
It's cold this morning. We're finally <laughs> getting to a cooler time of year, which is nice for me. I'm hoping to use the air conditioning less frequently. Would you like to see the Nomad bath or shower? That's it, right there. I just heat water up right on my stove and then I use probably like half a cup of water because I can serve that. And that is all I need for a full bath each day. Very easy. I must say I do love the softness of water. So this is a very enjoyable part of day in the same way that showering was when I used to shower every day. Chloe loves the ever-changing landscapes as much as I do. Each new campsite is her playground, full of fresh scents to be sniffed. I'll take in the aroma of sunflowers, while she takes in the aroma of, well, whatever mysterious critter left its mark nearby. To each their own, but we both are happy. This cup is my sink. My parents gifted me this mug, by the way, right after I became a nomad. The cup says she believed she could, so she did. I'm often asked what my parents think of me having embarked on this lifestyle, so I recently asked my mom how I should respond to this question. She said, well, of course we were worried about your safety, but we see how right this is for you, and what we want is for you to be happy. That support means more to me than words can express. That drives me actually absolutely nuts. Does it drive me so nuts that I'm going to fix it for this shot? I think so. Now all is right with the world. <laughs> for the entirety of my life, the county fair visits Flagstaff on Labor Day. The fair, it's my alter ego. I spend conscious, dedicated energy during most of my life to avoid bright flashing lights, loud sounds, intense man-made aromas, and heavy crowds. But the fair is pretty much one of my favorite things, ever. I feel at one with the traveling workers who nomad from town to town, carrying with them the spirit of the open road. Their journey is familiar, living untethered, always moving, always finding new places to call home, even if just for the weekend. I imagine those drawn to work in these places, that they embody the same unspoken understanding that guides me, that home is something you carry within you, wherever you go. We're driving away from our lovely, beautiful, amazing home. And it's so beautiful as we drive out. Maybe those carnival workers are just as akin to my soul as these elk, who just might be the same herd that passed by my car 30 miles away earlier in the video. Both are guided by that same instinct to roam, to explore, and to call each new place a home for a while. Thanks for watching. Help us grow our channel by hitting that like button, commenting, and be sure to subscribe. Also, head on over to Cheap RV Living to see what we're up to there. See you next time, folks.